Okay, in this video I'm going to talk about the mean value theorem and the mean value theorem basically says what's going on in this picture that I'm going to first discuss <clears throat> and then draw the picture again that goes with it. So what it says, it says if you have a function f of x and it satisfies these conditions, it says it's continuous on the closed interval a to b and then it's differentiable on the open interval a to b, it says then there's at least one point c1, I'm, 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 I'm going to call them c1, c2, c3, etc. if there's more than one, in this closed interval that satisfy this property. That basically says the derivative at that point equals the, the slope of the line connecting the endpoints. That's what the right side represents. So um, let's just draw a little picture for this to again explain real briefly. Okay, so okay, so I don't know, here's some interval, here's some x coordinate a, here's some y coordinate b. Um, all we know is is that it's continuous. So remember continuous means it's we can we don't have to pick up our pen from one point to the other. Um, likewise this is also continuous. Um, but the second condition says it has to be differentiable. And differentiable basically implies that a graph has to be smooth. Because remember, the de derivative doesn't exist, for example, um, at points where there's sharp points or cusps or kinks, as they're called, on your graph. So that means basically our function has to be continuous, one piece, and differentiable, which means it's got to be smooth. So continuous and differentiable, those are conditions one and two, so I'm just going to draw a generic graph that does that. So here's one point, and suppose it goes up to here. Okay, so let's label these points. Um, this would be the point a comma f of a on the left side, um, and then on the right this would be the point b comma f of b, and if you connect the slope if you, excuse me, if you connect a line, if you make a line connecting the endpoints, um, the slope of that line, we'll call it m, well, the slope of the line is just the change in y over change in x, so change in y would be f of b minus f of a, so that's the subtracting of the y coordinates generically, over the change in x, b minus a, Okay, so again, there's the right side of kind of the conclusion of the mean value theorem. And again, all that is is just the slope of the line connecting those points. Well, okay, so a picture is not a proof, but the intuitive idea is <clears throat> if you look at the slope of the line connecting the endpoints, there, it looks for sure like there's places on this graph where if you were to find the derivative at that point, here in my graph it looks like, I don't know, I would think there's at least two in this case. Um, to me it looks like there's two points. I'll call this x coordinate little c1 that's in the interval a to b, and this is the other x coordinate c2. It looks like the slope f prime of c1 equals that same slope of that line connecting the endpoints. I hope I'm saying everything correctly. I'm trying to talk and draw at the same time. Okay, so it says there exists at least one point in the interval, which they are, where if you take the derivative at that point, it's going to equal the slope, um, again, of the line connecting the endpoints. So that's what the mean value theorem says. Let's see if we can't do one problem at least here using it. Um, and again, before you can use the mean value theorem, you really do need to justify that your function is continuous and differentiable over, over the interval. Otherwise, things just aren't going to work out. Um, so let's see. So I'm going to take the function f of x equals 1 plus the cube root of x minus 1. And I'm going to do this on the interval 2 to 9. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to find all the points, all the c's where c is in the interval 2 to 9 so that the derivative evaluated at c is going to equal the slope of the line connecting the endpoints. And in this case, notice 2 is playing the role of our a value 
and this is playing the 9 is playing the role of our b value in that formula so f of b which is 9 over f of a which is 2 excuse me f of 2 um, over b minus a 9 minus 2 so that's the condition that will be satisfied if this function is continuous and differentiable but if you look at this function, um, cube root of x minus 1 um, plus 1, there's basically a theorem out there that says um, root functions, so there's a theorem that says root functions are continuous on their domains. So they're continuous on their domains, and notice this function, 1 plus the cube root of x minus 1. Um, this thing has domain all real numbers, because you can put any number underneath um, a, a, a cube root. You can have positive, negative, zero, so there's nothing that's going to make this undefined. So this root function is continuous on its domain, and here the domain again of our f of x function is going to be negative infinity to positive infinity. Well, if it's continuous basically everywhere is what that says, it's certainly going to be continuous on the interval 2 to 9, so continuity is good. Um, the next thing we need to show is differentiability. Um, and technically defined where a function is differentiable, so where is it differentiable? To me, the easiest thing to do um, to find it exactly, to be sure, is you basically just find the domain of the derivative function. Okay, so to figure out where it's differentiable, I'll, I'm going to take the domain of the derivative. Okay, well, that means I have to take the derivative, which is fine because we need that to compute this thing anyway. Okay, so we'll find the derivative of our function. So, okay, let's find it. So, I'm going to rewrite f of x as 1 plus x minus 1 raised to the 1 third power, to the cube root. And then the derivative of that, we'll just have to use the chain rule. So, the derivative of a constant is 0. The 1 third comes out front. We'll leave the inside alone. Subtract 1 away, which is negative 2 thirds. Then we multiply that by the derivative of the inside, which is just 1. So I can really rewrite the derivative as 1 over the cube root of x minus 1 squared cu the cube root of that. Because remember, this would go downstairs as the positive 2 thirds, and I could rewrite it that way. Well, notice that this function, um, again, this is f prime of x. This function um, is going to be actually undefined at a particular value, and notice the value it's going to be undefined at is when the denominator equals zero. So when the denominator equals zero, the derivative is going to be undefined. Well, to make the bottom equal to zero, basically you would have to get zero underneath the root right the inside stuff would have to be 0 0 squared is 0 the cube root of 0 is 0 3 times 0 is 0 so that means x minus 1 would equal 0 or x equals 1 so it says our original function f of x is actually differentiable so the domain is going to be all numbers except 1 so that means f is differentiable everywhere except at positive 1. So the function's differentiable everywhere except at positive 1. Um, again, then it's certainly differentiable from 2 to 9, so we can use the mean value theorem. And, you know, maybe you feel like this is a little overkill, but this is the procedure in general to show that, you know, a function's differentiable. So that's really why I want to go through all the legwork, so to speak. Okay, so it's certainly differentiable. I shouldn't have erased my derivative because we're going to use it here. So f prime of x, what did we get there? I believe we had 1 over the cube root of x minus 1 squared, the third root of that. Okay, so now we know that there's going to be a point in the interval that equals this f of 9 minus f of 2 over 9 minus 2. Well, that means I need to calculate that value. Um, so that we can figure out in the numerator. 
So now we're going to figure out our, our value. Well, certainly 9 minus 2 on the bottom, that's just 7. That's easy. Um, so if you plug 9 into the function, notice that f of 9, if we plug that in, I would get 9 minus 1, which is 8. And then remember to the, the cube root, um, you can think about that as being to the 1 -third power. The cube root of 8 is 2. 2 plus 1 would give us 3. So really, f of 9, I'm going to replace the value f of 9 with the value 3. And then it says I have to subtract away the value I get when I plug 2 into my function. So if I plug 2 in and I plug 2 in, well, 2 minus 1 is just 1. The cube root of 1 is 1. 1 plus 1 is 2. So it says I'm left with the number 1 7 Okay, so according to the mean value theorem, it says there's at least one point where the derivative equals 1 7th. And again, that point has to be in the interval 2 to 9. So once I've calculated the f of b minus f of a over b minus a, I set that equal to the derivative of the function. You could plug in c if you want to and then solve for c. To me, it's all, it's all the same difference. Okay, so this will be a little tedious to solve here, I think. Let's multiply both sides by 3. Um, and then I would get 1 over, I'm, I think I'm going to rewrite this as an exponent, x minus 1 to the 2 thirds power. If I multiply by 3, I'll get 3 sevenths. Ooh, sorry, that's all getting cut off there. I think my camera's doing something a little weird here. Um, sorry about that. Okay, so let's bring that back upstairs. Let me give myself a little more room. Okay, and then I think I would probably just do the same thing. I'm actually going to multiply by my x minus 1 to the 2 thirds. So I would multiply both sides by x minus 1 to the 2 thirds, x minus 1 to the 2 thirds. Um, Okay, so on the left side, we'll just be left with 1 now. On the right side, we'll get 3 over 7 times x minus 1 to the 2 thirds. At this point, I would multiply both sides by 7 thirds to get rid of the fraction on the right. So you'll be left with 7 thirds and then x minus 1 raised to the 2 thirds power. Well, now to get rid of the 2 thirds power, what I would do is raise both sides to the 3 halves power. A lot of algebra here at the end. Okay, so I would raise both sides to the 3 halves power. And if you want to, you could rewrite that um, on the right side. Those will cancel out. We'll get x minus 1. Notice we're really taking a square root. Okay, so we're getting 7 thirds cubed but then we're getting the square root of that to the one-half power. So remember when you take the square root, we get both positives and negatives. Okay, so then I can add one to both sides, and I'll be left with one plus or minus whew, the square root of seven over three cubed. That's going to equal x. Okay, well, to be in the interval, it has to be between 2 and 9. So 1 minus anything can't possibly work. So that means the negative part can't be a solution. So this is where you have to check. You want to find the solutions that are in your interval. So notice of the two signs, the positive, negative, only 1 plus um, 7 thirds cubed, the square root of that would be in the interval 2 to 9. Okay, so you can verify, in fact, that that point is in the interval. So that would be our number. Again, we could call it c using that other notation. We've now found that point c in the interval 2 to 9, where the derivative equals the slope of the endpoints. So, all right, I hope this example wasn't too bad. I hope my camera didn't do anything too crazy. Um, feel free to post comments, and uh, hopefully me or somebody else can point you in the right direction.